Welcome to the Metal Forge. I am Mark Jackson, your host, and tonight I'm going to be pounding out the best in mobile metal for you guys. And if you've got a request, all you've got to do is send it to Mark at WCHQFM.com. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Mark Jackson here. It is 7 o'clock. It is Thursday here on 100.9 FM WCHQ. Tonight, I have Mr. Wesley Allen in the studio. He's from Eastwood Records, from Core Sample Records, and he's going to be talking about some awesome, awesome stuff that they're going to be putting out, some future endeavors with them, and it's going to be cool. We're going to be talking about some of their artists, you know, and... Who all went to Metallica? Let's let's just face it. You know, every every metalhead in the city had to go. There's twenty three thousand people there. This goes back to like nineteen ninety nine. These are my dudes in Abominant, and here is Battery. <laughs>
That was Satellite Twin with We'll Make Fires. Before that was Abominant with Battery for all the people who went to the Metallica show. So I'm sitting in here with Wesley Allen from Eastwood Records. Wesley, how you doing today? I'm good. What's going on, Louisville? Oh my gosh, all the rain and the wind today. It's like it's like all crazy and stuff out there, you know? I think it's... the Wizard of Oz is coming. <laughs> Definitely a witch, maybe. <laughs> So as everybody knows, uh, you can tune in on Facebook Live. Uh, there is video uh, where you can see me in my Hulkamania shirt, brother, and Wesley over here in, in his uh, Nirvana shirt. Oh, yes. So tell us a little bit about Eastwood and Core Sample. How, how did you, what made you want to get into the, the record business? The record business. I don't know if anything ever made me want to get into the record business. <laughs> I always wanted to, to be a band and, and do all that myself. Uh, and every time that I would get some kind of project together, it would, it would fizzle out within, you know, a short period of time or whatever. And I don't think that's anything new to musicians. Not at all. Uh, so I got I got kind of tired of of going through that all the time and I realized if I really wanted to like do something spectacular I should just try and help other people achieve their dreams. And I thought maybe in doing that I could go back and take people that I'd listened to when I was a teenager like Peter Searcy and Duncan Barlow, right? And and see if we could, you know, put everything in place and see what we could do uh, instead of like just those people, they, they are creative, you know, they're always going to be creative. They're always going to create music, whether that music gets out to the populace, that's up to people like me and, absolutely. and, you, and you know, it's up to radio and it's pressing records, spinning records to, to help put money behind it and get it out there. Uh, and 
I think that's something that that I I watched in Louisville just kind of dwindle after the '90s. Like nobody wanted to do that anymore with the scene. Right. Like everybody just kind of scattered like roaches when the light comes on. Absolutely. You know? And I, you know, I I I know I'm not the only one that does it. Like there there are at least two or three other labels here in town. Right. And they all step up and do their part. And that's that's why the scene's growing, I think, right now. Absolutely. And you're we're in a rebuild a, a, pattern uh, right now. This, yeah, you're just seeing this massive explosion. And it's not one kind of music, which would, uh, I'm very thankful for. Like, it's a, it's a lot of broad spectrum of music coming out. Absolutely. So, so you mentioned Peter Cersei. Mm-hmm. Uh, were, how long has he been working with you and... And with I've, Eastwood. Been, I've been in contact with Peter ever since I opened Eastwood Records, which has been five years now. Okay. Uh, we did get to release his record in 2017, and we are going to re-release that same record with new material oh, on wow. it. Oh, wow. So like year. a deluxe edition. Yeah, it's a deluxe edition, and it'll be... Like we, I think we'll even press new vinyl. And oh everything. wow! Like and, limited edition Coke mm-hmm. bottle vinyl stuff oh, yeah. like that. That's oh, yeah. a, that's good stuff. I, I do every every kind of vinyl that I do press is either like two color marble or some kind of splatter effect. Nice, uh, absolutely. I, I just like that. I think it yeah, it, it adds it's, something to the record instead of it just being like a solid black record, which is interesting you because know, it's a piece of art now. Absolutely, it is, and it is. You know, one of the interesting things that I've always seen is like, you know, all these seventies bands who pressed all their stuff and then they re-released all their stuff in like the eighties, mm-hmm. you know, or at the, at the end of the vinyl era where they were on like picture discs oh, and, yeah. and all this stuff. Picture discs are amazing. They really are. And the thing that gets me the most is like when I go into a store and whether it be like a books a million guitar center sells vinyl, you know, oh, stuff yeah. like that. The heck Target does. Right. I went into Target. They had a whole and vinyl set. There's like a little sticker on there. It says it says back to black on it. So it's like they're re-releasing it on black vinyl for like the yeah. first time. Yeah, like or that's something. a big thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, what a marketing ploy that yeah. is. You know, it's like. Oh, you, know, you you got this picture disc version of Kill 'Em All. I will tell well, you though. Here's the black version of since it. Since I've been pressing stuff, I have found that colored vinyl sounds different. Everything that you can play sounds the best on black vinyl. Right. Once you take the the color out and make it white or you make it blue or two colors or transparent, it loses sound quality. I don't. Yeah. I don't know why it is, but that is true. Well, one of the, and the yeah, it, it, yeah, I can tell the difference with that too. Right. Excuse me. So a lot of people do prefer to press it on black and not lose any of the sound quality. I haven't heard much of a difference because uh, the way that you get test presses is you get uh, black vinyl. You don't, they don't, like, even if you they won't order press it, it as, yeah, if you order it as a marble record, your test presses are still, still going to be, be black vinyl. So you hear it the way it should be. <laughs> then when you get the other one, you hear it, 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 there's a little bit of, it's l- just a little, frequency. I guess, like a little weaker of a signal. Right. Maybe it doesn't mute anything. You don't really lose anything. It's just, not as loud as the other one. Right. Or maybe So it's not like a little cool. bit of a decibel loss. Right. Yeah. Right on. That makes sense, though, actually. So, like I said, you've got... I'm looking at your uh, your website right now, and you have uh, uh, Nick Dittmeyer and the Sawdusters on your on Eastwood. You have... Very proud to have them on. The there. Whiskey Riders. The Whiskey Riders. They just released a new video called Trainwreck. Yeah. And they have uh, a new EP coming out here shortly, like within a month. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, whenever you do your your artist pressing and everything, do you, you know, you know, it's an EP. Are you going to put it on vinyl as well? EPs usually don't make it to vinyl. Uh, Unless that's going to be like the... The, 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 major way that, release. the way that they do is that if you have like two EB, two EPs, which like both of them have four songs or like five songs on right. them, then then we can take both EPs and put it on a record. Because then you've got like 
four songs for each side. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Or the so or it'd be like one to, deluxe you could just release press of both. A seven inch, right? And and you might be able to get like the four song EP on there <laughs> as long as you you know you have your nine minutes per side. Right. It's cut your at thirty three. Time restrictions always pay attention to those. You know that's the interesting thing is uh, on twelve inch vinyl cut at thirty three. It's roughly 22, 22 and a half minutes. 22 and a half minutes per side. And if you listen to Dark Side of the Moon, it is exactly 45 minutes. Yeah. And I've it, always they take loved up every space that they could possibly take on that. Absolutely. And I love that so Classic much. And record. if I could ever do that, I would want to do it that way. Yeah. And what's really interesting to me is it's like, you know, bands that do that, you know, like Thick as a Brick, you know, Jethro Tull, stuff like that, mm-hmm. where they just take up every available moment not only did they take up every second they took up every track on that mixing board like there was oh, no absolutely space left in the, in that album for any more music so what are you um what are you most excited about that's coming out that you're that, 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 that i'm that, putting out yes. or just period that, well let's do both uh, uh what are you what are you most excited about from from a local band that you you like that's coming out, if, from, if there's anything. From Eastwood Records and Core Sample Records, uh, I have a new band on uh, Core Sample Records called Sound Company, and it's uh, actually Hunter Embry that owned the New Vintage. Oh, okay. And ran the New Vintage for a long time. Yeah. Uh, it's his band, and I would say they're kind of like a garage rock version of like The Doors meets Steppenwolf. It's really good really good guitar driven something told me that and, it was something it was going to be something it. like that yeah, when it's, you it's real good stuff when you said sound company was the name it just yeah. sounds total 70s oh yeah it, it's total 70s like good garage rock kind of stuff nice uh i love those guys and their album i've just gotten it pressed and gotten it back their album comes out in like two months and then with eastwood records uh, we have just released Dave Ernst and the Early Favorites Hickory Switch. Okay. Uh, and we'll have the vinyl and CDs for those pretty soon. Uh, but it is on all the digital sites if you need to get it. And you should, because it's awesome. Uh, then next we have Eric Bolander and his re release of The Wind, as well as Sean Whiting's uh, High Expectations. Both of those will be coming out. Uh, around the end of this month and next month. Nice. Uh, so and I'm assuming all you're... those in the works, as well as the Peter Searcy re-release, uh, re-release, and then I believe Nick Dittmeyer is working on new material right now. Awesome. Um, we did. We released his latest album in October, so we're still promoting that right now. Absolutely. But I do. I do think that he is busy writing new material. Uh, Foxbat is another band that's on Core Sample Records. I right. believe they're working on a new album, too. Wow, and they just came out with that one, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, Rotgut just yeah. came out in August of last year. Right. Uh, so they're still out promoting that. I think uh, they just got through a run in like Chicago, and they, they're out on the road, actually, like right now. So... But uh, those guys, they kill it live. So if you ever get a chance to go see them, you should do it. Check them out. And how about we listen to a, a Fox Bat tune right now? Does that sound Sounds good to good everybody to out there? This is a slow strut from Fox Bat here on 100.9 FM WCHQ.
This is Gary Sampson with the Kentuckiana Blues Society, and I hope you'll check out my show every Friday night at 8 p.m. The Kentuckiana Blues Radio Show features the best in local and regional blues music. I'll also play any national blues artist who will be performing in our area, and a blues calendar for that weekend is broadcast at 8.30. It's 729. Time for the WCHQ Concert View. A service of WCHQ 100.9 FM and Leo Weekly. Louisville's eccentric observer since 1990. Pick up your free copy at any of Leo's 500 distribution points to read smart and irreverent news, commentary, music, and arts coverage. A new issue is out every Wednesday, and daily online exclusive content is available every day at leoweekly.com. All right, this is your WCHQ Concert View for Thursday, March 14th. I'm Ed. Let's take a look at what's shaking and baking in the Louisville area this evening. All right, starting up here in St. Matthews, me and you are performing tonight over at Gersel's Place starting at 8 o'clock. Joey Constantine is at Merle's Whiskey Kitchen tonight starting at 8 o'clock. Jossie Lauren is at Derby City Pizza Company and PRP starting tonight at 6 o'clock. Over at Stevie Ray's Blues Bar tonight, it is the Thursday night throwdown kicking off at 8 o'clock. Justin Paul Lewis is over at the Derby City Gaming uh, that starts tonight at 6 o'clock. The Louisville Hot Club are at the Hell or High Water Bar starting tonight at 8 o'clock. Dead Horses and Cicada Rhythm are over at the Zanzibar tonight starting at 8 o'clock. Acoustic Kink is over at Derby City Pizza Company on the UofL campus starting tonight at 6 o'clock. Soul River Brown is at Goodwood Brewing tonight starting at 8 o'clock. Will Aldum is over at Carmichael's Bookstore right up here on Frankfurt Avenue starting tonight at 7 o'clock. Castle Black, Bear Bones, and Shark Sandwich are over at the Butchertown Social starting tonight at 8 o'clock. Ut Gret and Eugene Chadbourne are over at Jimmy Can't Dance starting tonight at 7 o'clock. Bendigo Fletcher is celebrating the release of their brand new EP over at the Kaiju tonight starting at 9 o'clock. And over at Gravely Brewing starting at 8 o'clock, it is an evening with Turquoise starting tonight at 8 o'clock. This has been your WCHQ Contribute. If you've got a gig you'd like to let us know about, head over to WCHQFM.com and hit the icon at the top of the screen that says, List Your Gig. That's right. Thank you, Ed, for the concert view. And all those shows are happening today, by the way. And I don't know if anybody, any of you all picked up on that. Those are all shows tonight. So get out your house, brave the wind and the rain, and go rock out somewhere. And support some local music. Absolutely. And I am here in the studio, This is, and I am Mark Jackson. This is the Metal Forge you're listening to on 100.9 FM WCHQ. In the studio here with Wesley Allen from Eastwood and Core Sample Records. And got me a nice little awesome sticker. Look at this, guy. This is EWR. It's good stuff. I like the... Uh, we traded stickers. Absolutely, we did. This is, you know, because whenever, you know, you used to be in the metal scene, there was always a thing, like, you, you traded things. Oh, yeah. Because we all knew how hard it was to do what we did. Mm-hmm. You know, if you put out an album... And if you liked a band on that album, you traded albums. I think metal has always been the genre that has suffered the most. <laughs> it, 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 it literally it well, does because like yeah, parents don't support any of it. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of just, times, no. You're yeah, right. I don't know. Well, sometimes I guess if you're lucky, they do. But like. It's just deemed as like that's bad, Racket. that's evil. Like you're not supposed to be into that, and so for for it to like become its own scene and still thrive after this long, like it's not going anywhere. Well, it yeah, I mean, you know, ground, metal you is know. the like you said this earlier. You know about you know roaches with the light on kind of thing. You know that's. Kind of the the metal scene is it is it, it's going to survive everything and the nuclear holocaust and it will you know, and the only thing that's going to be left is local Louisville metal here on CHQ yeah and, and, and Ozzy Osbourne and Ozzy he yeah. he's going to live through it he's 
You know, everybody thought Lemmy was going to, but well, he he checked that out a couple of years ago. I think you'll be surprised when Lemmy comes back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "Told you so." Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> April Fools, <laughs> right? <laughs> and with a with a Jack and Coke in one hand, yeah. a Marlboro in the oh, other, yeah. oh, and yeah. a middle finger, just letting letting everybody just have letting it loose. Yep, got love, Lemmy. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, anybody who knows me, I'm I'm a huge Motorhead. Oh, he's the Godfather. Yeah, so. you know, I'm a huge Motorhead, Mark. So you know, oh, it's yeah. that's one band I regret never going to see. You know, I, I do believe they came around here a couple times where I could have. Right. Uh, I know they played in like the Grand in New Albany in like right. 1988. Really? Yeah. I uh, hadn't even been old enough to go. No, me for either. That. So, uh, uh, but back in like 2009, they were they were playing. Uh, it wasn't called Not Fest at the time. Maybe it was, the, it was the Mayhem Tour, Mayhem Energy Drink. Okay. And they played at uh, Noblesville with Ooh. Slipknot and Slayer. And, oh man! And you know, I was Noblesville's a great. Oh, I love going see. up there to see yeah. shows. Oh yeah. Uh, the first time I ever saw, you know, uh, Rush was in Noblesville. For uh, saw Pantera in Noblesville. I saw Maiden and Alice Cooper there. Nice. It was so, man, it was killer. I've I've only got to see Maiden in St. Louis, which that's kind of a special thing because I saw them at the same venue four nice. four years apart from one another. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, awesome. it, it was awesome stuff. Uh, but they, I wasn't in a financial place to where I could go see them. I've and it it, it was it's always been that way. Right. And then finally in 2015, they were playing the Murat Room in. Uh, or uh, in Indy, uh-huh. so I was like, you know what? This is the time that'd I've got to go. That'd be a great show. That's uh, a smaller room. It I is. Think. Yeah, you know, like thirty five hundred people at yeah, most. That would be great. And I was probably, I was in like row M or something, so not far from the stage. I've only seen them twice, but I think Iron Maiden puts on the best live show I've ever seen. Oh, like it, out of anybody. absolutely! It they they they're, they're killer. Yeah. They're killer. I, I I thoroughly enjoy it. And you know that was the year when I saw the the Motorhead show was the year that he had passed away. Oh, okay. And Indianapolis was the first like full show they played on the tour. Oh. And it's it was another it was like a wild crazy experience for me. You know, just to for that, and then you know. His death happening later that year. It was, right. it was crazy. So here we go. You know, you got Fox Bat and, you know, Sound, co- uh, sound Company. Is that what it yes, was? Sound yeah, company. Sound Company. On, co- uh, on uh, Core sam- Sample. Core Sample. My gosh. I cannot speak after coming back. I'll, I don't <laughs> know if it's right. the jitters of the of the Sumatra coffee or what. I'm like, yeah. wah! <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... What do you look for in a band? Is it just somebody you like? I mean, do you just meet somebody and you know what? You know uh, what, dude? You're pretty cool. Here's I, I, what I have to get to know the people for a little while. Like I don't, I don't just jump right into business Absolutely. with anybody. Uh, so I, I have to get to know you. Obviously, I, I do have to like your music. Like there's got to be something about it that appeals to me. Um, and. In the most recent years, it has come into effect that I am a business and that, like, to keep going, it it has to be financially. Like, yes. It, it, it has to be something I look at and can go, I can make my money back on this. I'm not, I'm not looking for myself to really get rich. Right. But if one of my bands, like, hit it big that would be praise enough. Like I would be so happy right. that I did that for somebody and it, it ultimately it would pay off for me as well in the long run. But I, I, I want one of those to happen. I want somebody to break out and be big because that helps me break out other people. Absolutely. Like if, if one of my acts and that's how old record labels worked is they would, that's why they, there was so much music in the 80s. Right. Is because they would sign 10 bands at a time and, and put out a record one from them. each of them. And if one of those blew up, it paid for the other nine. Right. It's like the, uh, you know, 
the spaghetti, throw it to the wall and see if it sticks. Right. Yeah. You know, and if it does, then it, you know, golden streets. Yeah. At that yeah. Point. You're gonna you're gonna have something with that. Right. So, you know, and you know, the looking at the roster of of musicians that you have, I mean, you've got some high potential people. Foxbat, uh, Peter Cersei, the Whiskey Riders, you know. Awesome, awesome groups going on. And that's, you know, you know, why I asked you to come in ultimately is because I knew some of the people that you had, but mm -hmm. you know, like I didn't know you would release the Fox Bat stuff, which is so cool because, you know, Clay and everything, he's a cool dude. So Right. And I like, you know, I like following his career from way back when. Way old stuff, you know, from when we were teenagers and oh, yeah. and everything, playing in a uh, fire like, like firehouses and like peeking in the ass. Don't give up on their dreams. And, Absolutely and keep, not. You know, it's one band after another, but they make it happen. So right, and and you know, I mean, to me, it's one of those things where it's not always necessarily about, you know, it's not letting go of a dream or anything, but it ultimately becomes a way of life. Oh yeah. You know, because it's I've quit playing music, you know, you know, I've quit playing music before. And then about six or eight months after the fact, wonder like, okay, what's going on? Something's missing, you know? And, oh, yeah. and then like, well, maybe I should, maybe I should get back into band and, and play again. And like, I, I kind of put down the, the dream of having the band and, and doing an album and everything, but I play guitar every day. Right, like I, I've, I, that's something I won't give up. Like do I won't you, give up writing and constantly playing and trying to be better. But I don't have an avenue to put it. I mean, I guess I have two labels. That right, could, you do have. It's just you, like I, I'm just not so focused on doing. But you're focused other people's on stuff. On, I don't want to take the time or money to try and, right. and do mine. Absolutely, so, that makes sense. I mean, so. You know, if we equate, you know, in the music industry, a producer is essentially the director, like a director of a film. He's a producer. He's the director of an album. The the way I see that is like the producer to me is the person that makes the album sound like it is. Right. It could be called the sound engineer because that's who's moving the things on the board. You know, right. while you're mixing it and everything, the person that mixes it, that's the producer. Whereas, like, what I do is more of, like, an executive producer. Right. And that just means that you're the financial backing Absolutely. for this. Uh, do you get into, do you just let the bands go? And do you, uh, well, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, say... I come to you and I'm on your label and I say, Hey, I want to put out this album this year. And then do you just say, okay, we'll demo some songs for me and I'll listen to them and we'll see, or, you know, do you have a, a say so in what gets released ultimately? Oh yeah. I mean like, you know, as uh, long as it's, you know, not like, yeah, I mean, I have to lighting approve. a trash can on fire. Or yeah. Something. I mean, I have to approve everything that, that gets put out or whatever. Yeah. Right. So when it comes down to, you know, picking, you know, so you, they have a writing session and they say they write 10 songs and you like eight of them, you, you decide to go with the eight, I would assume. Right. Or, uh, I, or, I mean, you know, it's just I, like, I'm not that picky. Like if you get in there and you cut 10 songs, we're probably going to release the all 10. 10 songs. Right on. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to cut a song from your, the only way I would cut a song from them is getting back to the time restrictions for vinyl. Oh, we absolutely. Yeah. So if like one side runs 25 minutes and the other one's 22, we're probably going to cut one from the, from the one side. side. Yeah. Right. Because just because of time constraint, yeah, that you I don't, don't want to clip the song in the middle of oh, it. Oh no, that would be awful. Not at so all. We're just going <laughs> to take that song <laughs> off of there. You know? It reminds me of, uh, like in the late eighties, there were bands that did that, that they would, um, Oh yeah, where just like Tom Petty, right in the middle. Well, Tom Petty used to do a thing. He's like, for those of you who are listening oh, on yeah. vinyl, now is time, time to, to go flip the record. To for you people people. <laughs> who are listening on CD, you just leave it playing in the yeah. CD. You oh, know, yeah. it was a, it was an interesting concept. It was an intermission, right? For the record, and <laughs> it, I'm so glad you know that we don't have any of that 
to do now, you know, oh, yeah. that, yeah. you know, with creating, I guess if we create a new technology of, uh, of well, I guess playing. MP3 could be the, I guess that's the new, the new thing. Yeah. But then it just never stops. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah. you it's know, it's unending. Right. And, and I don't, I don't personally, I don't like the way, uh, digital sounds. It's, it's, it's so much compression and it's very grainy to me. It, wait a second. You're saying digital release is grainy and you're pushing vinyl. Yes, wait a second. I, I would ra- that, much uh? rather listen to vinyl that is literally you're getting sound straight from the board. Right. On a record. I like versus all Versus like the digital where everything's clipped and like time tracked and everything like that. Absolutely. Uh, I got a question here from a listener. Or actually, he's from a, he's a viewer. Uh, it is the Louisville legend Jeff Gaither. He was on the show about a month or so ago, okay. and he wanted to ask. He's like, "How do you pick a cover artist for your albums that that actually draw the cover?" Yes, art? Uh, I I don't ever pick that really, unless the artist comes to me and says, "I have a you know I have a problem. I don't have cover art. Then right. I will help them find someone to do it, but." Uh, but I, I mainly leave that up to the artists. Like this is their music; it's their vision. I just need to represent it the right way. Absolutely. So I let them pick who they want to do their their cover art, and like w- we've done that with. Uh, I'm currently trying to uh, put out Duncan Barlow's from Endpoint and Guilt, and by the grace of God, I'm trying to put out a solo record from him. And I think as of currently, we've probably looked at eight or nine different album covers. And and like, as soon as he went and picked one, then he got back in touch with that artist and that artist wasn't working with, like, he just kind of fell under the bus or something. Oh, wow. And so now we're back to like, we got to go pick another album cover. So. I want to. I do. I'm sorry to cut you off on this one, and thank fine. you for that. But I do really want to. Like, I'm going to nerd out here really fast Uh-oh. because I'm looking at the feed here, uh-huh. and I am like, oh my gosh, that John Zazula is watching this feed right now. Oh wow! Uh, and if anybody doesn't know who John Zazula is out there, uh, he is from Megaforce Records. He signed Metallica for the Kill 'Em All album. Well, so. you should definitely check out Foxbat because they are an <laughs> incredible band, and they could take uh, they could take your label to a new place. Absolutely. Wait a second! It just wow. There's a lot of people on here commenting, and it kicked me out of the room for a minute. And I was the one who was hosting. What <laughs> yeah, the heck? You're the host. How does that happen? Wow. Get kicked out oh, of the party. Oh, there's still there's still a tall, whole awesome ton of people in here. So let's listen to another band here that's on on um, Eastwood Records. This is the song "Freedom" from the Whiskey Riders. Freedom.
freedom. It's like William Wallace there. <laughs> and this is 100.9 FM WCHQ. This is the Metal Forge with Mark Jackson. And I have in the studio Wesley Allen from Eastwood Records, Core Sample Records. I got it out a lot better that time. Yeah, buddy. That flowed right out. <laughs> you just heard Freedom by the Whiskey Riders. They are signed to the Eastwood Records label here in Louisville, Kentucky. That's off the 1865 album. Awesome. So how do people get a hold of you? Do you accept unsolicited? material i do you can go to eastwood slash records.com and i do believe there's a way for you to submit uh like anything to me uh give me a little while to listen to it right um, i have i uh, currently own three businesses i own two record two label. record labels and then i own flashback comics and toys over on taylorsville road uh, oh wow I just started that but uh Dude, Between I'm a comic three, nerd. It keeps me busy, so awesome. So I'm gonna have to, you know, I'm a comic nerd, and Uh-oh. I'm gonna have to. Yeah, you need uh, sorry, to come on back. Stephanie's still listening. Sorry, Stephanie, I'm gonna have to go see this <laughs> see this guy's shop. <laughs> I just had somebody come in today, and they they bought six hundred dollars worth of comics. I couldn't believe. Oh my gosh, it was a very good day for me. Absolutely, that's 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 awesome. Yeah. Do you have any like, ra- you know, because I, I went to SuperCon. I, I, I have a lot of rare. Yeah. I, that's what I specialize in: is okay. rare and vintage toys and comics. Okay. Do, so, do you have like a twenty thousand dollar copy of Amazing Fantasy fifteen and stuff like I, that? I have like some three thousand dollar items. Oh my gosh, fifteen hundred dollars. And that's the Millennium Falcon from the original. No, those aren't those aren't that expensive. <laughs> no, I got some of those for cheaper. Do you? Uh, you know, I'm a Masters of the Universe fan. I've got carded Masters of the Universe figures. Original, original. Woo. I'm gonna have, have battle armor Skeletor. Damn it! There goes there goes the there next goes few checks. Paycheck. Yep, there goes my paycheck. I'm awesome. actually about to, or uh, because I'm such a nerd like this, I'm actually uh, on my next check. I'm order. I'm pre-ordering the Super Seven release of the Masters of the Universe film. Oh, nice! Editions. With the Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, and yeah. Frank Langella Skeletor and everything, and oh, yeah. and God Skeletor, and it's like, uh, uh, take my money. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. take my money, please. <laughs> I'm yes, such sir. a nerd like that. So here we are. We're wrapping up on the uh, on the seven o'clock hour. Here, you did say you wanted to mention another artist that you're hearing. Yes, another artist that I do have on the Eastwood Records label. Uh, he he is supposed to be having two releases this year. Wow. Uh, one is a Blaze Foley tribute album, so it's all tributed to one person. Uh, Blaze Foley, and his name is John Clay. And simultaneously, he is working on his f- first full-length rep- record. Awesome. I did put out his first EP uh, that was a few years back, and uh, we're still riding high on that one. But uh, both him, Sean Whiting, and Eric Bolander will all be performing at Master Musicians Festival in Somerset uh, this summer. So if you're, if you want to go see a really great show and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, uh, you can go get tickets for master musicians festival in Somerset, Kentucky. Uh, Jason Isbell and 400 unit is the headliner this year. Um, It's going to be a good show. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad to hear that, you know, that, you know, putting out, being an artist and, you know, p- being able to put out an album a year or an album every couple of years is awesome, mm-hmm. you know, because ultimately I don't see the, how the bands bubble. in the sixties did it. Cause they put out like two or three a year. Oh, absolutely. Oh, like, they were like look at Creedence. song albums. Yeah. Look at Credence. They, they put out like between 1966 and 1968, they put out like nine albums. I think the Beatles literally every year from 64 to 69, put two to three albums yeah, but, every year. <laughs> You can't you can't count them because they didn't play live after like nineteen sixty six. Yeah, after sixty six, they did take the, the break. Till break the famous hell, concert. break hell. They didn't play anything. Yeah, yeah, they didn't play any shows. They didn't do any tours. Yep. You know, so they were essentially studio musicians. They However, 
They were some of the greatest albums ever yeah, released. They, they really crafted some genius work. Well, just going, you know, from the modern recording era, from listening to, you know, doing like two or three tracks. Well, all and, of that early stuff is literally, I think, all four tracks. But it's been it's four tracks bounced down, bounced down to, to two, and then back down to one, and then and, and then they recorded yeah. a whole new four tracks, yeah. bounced those bounced down, down to another down to channel, another one. So it's like almost eight to sixteen, right? It, real tracks, all, all bounced all down, down at one time, four. you know, yeah. all down, yeah, and then down to, to one channel because pre stereo. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, actually, and then and then finally when it was all mixed mono, right? Like uh, the and. From what I've read about that, uh, they said that the mono mix is actually the best mix because it's all formulated to come out of one speaker. Right. Rather than separating it into the two left and right speakers. Absolutely. Which, if you listen, it's interesting to listen to a Beatles stereo album yeah mono because you lose so you much lose so much because the you drums lose, are only on one side right and and, and like the lead will be on the other yeah you know it almost makes it feel like it was a it's, fake stereo it's hollow or echoed yes you know? very yeah. much um and but the interesting thing is is hearing like certain songs like let it be for example they'll end up they'll have like two, a dual lead track mm-hmm. where there's two separate leads being played and then you'll hear one, and it'll be completely different than the other. Right. And then when you hear both, you know both of them, it's like that doesn't. I don't remember sounding like that. Right. But that's how it was. Mm-hmm. So here we go. We're gonna play some stuff uh, from our guest next week, Belushi Speedball. But before we get to that, this has been Wesley Allen. He's been awesome and tonight. Did you have any final questions? Is there anything from from the viewers from the viewers out here? Anything? Before we wrap it up, and there's just no chance for another. <laughs> um. Ed says, hi, Wes, or hey, Wes. Hello, Mr. Ed Snyder. The the program director here, Mr. Ed Snyder. That Wait a minute, that didn't sound right. Sorry, Ed. <laughs> uh, do you have any final shout-outs to anybody? You want to say hi to mom, dad, Clay? Would definitely love to say hi to my mother and my stepfather and my brother and his wife, Stacy, uh, and their two boys, Luke and Ryland. Nice. So. Big happy family and everything yeah. else. So, without any further ado, here comes Belushi Speedball with the bleeps, the sweeps, and the creeps here on 100.9 FM WCHQ. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next week where Belushi is going to play live in studio and on Facebook Live. Sounds good. Thank you, Louisville. Thank you.
You're listening to WCHQLP, Louisville, Kentucky, 100.9 FM. All local, all community, all the time.